I am Captain Tommy Scoville, and this is the lifeboat. And if we had one of those little clicker things from Hollywood, we could go take three. Uh, boy, this is just not my morning. And uh, people, I swear to you, I do not do second takes. I don't do third takes. If the message isn't good, then uh, you know, obviously I didn't prepare, and usually I'll, I'll scrap it, and I'll go back to uh, a pre-planned uh, message. Um, because there's a lot of things that uh, I need to talk to you about that have been planned out for years. Uh, that is not the case this time. The case is that uh, I've been awake for a really long period of time, and I feel like my tongue might weigh 14 pounds. Uh, it's just yeah, kind of a mealy mouth thing, and I'm having a difficult time keeping my thoughts in, in, in line due to how long I've been awake. You know what that is, don't you people? It's an excuse. All right. Here's the deal. Um, what we're going to talk about today, uh, yeah, JJ, I said here's the deal. Um, what we're going to talk about today is um, relationships and sex. When you first get sober, um, one of the big dangers that uh, that we face is that interpreting the, the uh, things going on in the brain um, can be difficult. It can be misleading. Um, people, when depending on the drug you have been on, uh, Every drug affects your sex drive in a different way. Uh, methamphetamine is famous for turning your sex drive uh, up to an 11 on a scale of 1 to 10. And um, most people who have been addicted to, uh, to methamphetamine, sex is a huge component of that addiction. Uh, because the first time that you uh, have sex on meth, it is a completely different thing than uh, sex you know, without meth. The trouble with that is that your brain gets very accustomed to that. And uh, when you become sober, sex is never going to be the same for a lot of people. Literally never going to be the same. Um, now, before you get too uh, discouraged, I'm talking about people who have got 10 years, 20 years of, uh, of meth addiction. For those individuals, you're going to have to live with a very different sex life for the rest of your life. Because the brain just, you got so accustomed to the normal chemical release from, uh, from having sex. And then you had the huge dump on top of that from methamphetamine. And then the release chemical, the reward chemical for just the ritual of the fact that you're doing those drugs. And then on top of that, um, meth, the way it gets you high is just releasing those chemicals anyway. So you just have such a flood of all of the feel-good chemicals, um, you know, coursing through the brain. It's not going to be that way when you uh, first get uh, sober. So... There are people who use that as an excuse, and it is a huge trigger because it's a very legitimate thing if your, uh, you know, if your sex life changes that dramatically. On the flip side of that coin, almost every other drug cuts down on the libido. Uh, so when you get sober, the exact opposite is going to happen. You are going to find yourself with the sex drive of an 18-year-old, and that's all well and good and sounds fantastic um, for those of us who are, let's say, over the age of 30. Okay. Um, but the problem with that is this, uh, it is very easy to confuse sex drive and love, um, especially since love is a chemical reaction of the brain. I'm not saying love's not real. It is absolutely real. Uh, but what makes it feel like you're in seventh grade? I mean, how many times have you heard the cliche, I feel like I'm in high school again? Well, that really happens. You know, your, your brain starts to make you feel younger because you're experiencing something like the first time you felt love. That is a super danger when you first get sober. Um, in most uh, rehabilitation circles, whether you're at a rehab center or you're at AA or NA, they'll say, give it two years um, you know, before you get into a relationship. Well, that's really easier said than done, especially if you, you, know, you, know, you end up looking like Pepe Le Pew from the cartoons. I mean, you see somebody and you go, uh, and the heart pops out and you just think, <laughs> you know, this is the reality for so many people who come off of opiates or benzos or alcohol or anything that really has slowed down uh, the libido. Um, now that libido is back and very oftentimes, uh, as it first starts to happen, you know, you're in rehab or you're attending 12-step um, programs and in the room are uh, members of the opposite sex or if you happen to be gay, members of the same sex, whatever. Uh, but the person you're looking at is probably going through the exact same thing. And the, the fact that everybody is just sort of, um, you know, adjusting to this new chemical process in the brain 
makes for love at first sight relationships that are notoriously um, doomed. You know, everything seems so perfect. Well, of course it does. You know, your brain is going, ah, this is love. I'm going to reward it with chemicals. And look, he's not doing anything wrong. I'm going to reward that with chemicals. And the chemicals just keep coming and coming and coming. And the next thing you know, uh, you're madly in love with someone that may not be a great fit. Um, you really, really need to guard against this, people. And you also have to make a inventory of who you are, right? If your drug of choice was methamphetamine, then you know what this means. It means that, you know, you're uh, going forward, you might meet Mrs. Wright and it's not going to feel like you met Mrs. Wright because it takes a while for the brain chemistry to level out. On the flip side of that coin, if you're, coin, if you're addicted to heroin or you're addicted to benzos or alcohol or even THC to an extent, um, any of the pills, uh, you're going to have the opposite thing happen. Uh, all of a sudden, you, you really could fall in love with an oak tree. <laughs> you know, you're gonna, you could fall in love with somebody that is not going to be the best, uh, the best match. So two years is an arbitrary number. I don't know where they came up with that because every single uh, uh, substance has a different adjustment period. And that adjustment period is different depending on how long you've been abusing. It also depends on weight. It depends on so many different things that two years is very arbitrary. Um, I'm six years uh, sober. And uh, there's no chance that I'm ready for, uh, for a relationship. I'm, I'm not. Uh, it's one of those things that I really need to guard myself from because I know that the potential is there to, uh, you know, to instantly fall in love with someone and not know whether or not that's real. So you really have to sort of be on your guard with this, people, uh, especially since um, this is such a massive massive trigger to go back to uh, to who and what you were. Um, also on this, people, um, and we're adults, right? The only person that's going to be snickering at this is a guy in Chicago whose name shall remain anonymous. Even though I named him, I won't name him. Um, but to everyone else, we can talk about this, we're adults. But uh, depending on the, uh, the drug that you were on, um, sexual performance is really either greatly enhanced or uh, really stifled. And I don't just mean sex drive. For people who have been on opiates for long periods of time, they may not be, uh, their libido may not be as strong, but um, you know, when they have intercourse, it's, they're desensitized because it's a painkiller. They're massively desensitized. And this tends to um, prolong sexual activity for, her, for heroin addicts. Very often times, You'll hear stories of guys that say they faked it <laughs> because especially if they're a significant other or their mate doesn't know that they're addicted to opiates, um, you know, to either not hurt uh, their feelings or to, uh, to not let them know that they're using again. They literally, you know, you have guys faking orgasms. It happens. Trust me, it happens. Uh, but on the flip side of that, if it was meth that you're addicted to, um, you know, people on meth tend to, to literally have sex five, six, seven, eight, nine times a day, and they can do this for days and days on end because it's um, the, the fact that it's releasing so much feel-good chemical in the brain just causes that sex drive to be through the roof. Um, all of these things are now gone, right? So you get one of the complaints you hear from uh, heroin addicts all the time is when they get back into a relationship, well, that sensitivity's back, and big time back. And you have uh, guys who are dealing with, uh, with premature ejaculation and you're dealing with things that cause people to go back to their drug of choice because instantly they're not feeling like, you know, a stud or a man or whatever the, you know, the cliche. People, this is when communication is key. This is when you have to really talk to the person that you're with, you know, your significant other and say, hey, things are going to be really different just for, you know, you don't have to think, convince yourself that I'm never going to be the same. That's, that's simply not the case, but you do need a, a period of adjustment that if you don't allow for, um, there are some real serious triggers there. Uh, you know, tons of triggers. Feeling of inadequacy uh, is, a, is a trigger. Um, you know, a loss of sex drive or massive gain in sex drive. All of these things uh, can really jeopardize a person's sobriety. And since uh, for many people, um, 
quitting is a matter of life and death. Uh, they just released the statistics on the number of people um, who overdosed and died in my home state, you know, the state that I now live in. And the numbers, they had been on the decline until last year. And uh, the jump, it was, I mean, astronomical what COVID has done to, uh, or they're attributing it to COVID. And I don't know enough to, uh, to argue with that. But they're saying that, uh, you know, what COVID has done, there are so many more people who are, uh, who are overdosing. The number of people whose life is in danger because of the drug that they're on, you, you're going to have to cope with the fact that uh, your sex life is going to change. It's uh, knowing this going in is a good thing because it's something that most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about. Again, the exception being people on methamphetamine who, um, you know, sex has been such a huge part of their, of their drug use. Obviously, they've been thinking about it. But for uh, most people who are quitting, <clears throat> it's not something that you think about as you're starting to quit. And it's something that you need to. If you're starting to quit right now, know that there's going to be some massive changes. Know that um, the feeling of love that you have for a girl that you've known six seconds um, may not be 100% real. Um, that's something that you really have to take into account. And people, what is the defining characteristic of, uh, characteristic of um, addicts, right? There's about four of them. One big one, obviously, is lying. But one of the other ones is we want it and we want it now. It's not just sex. That's love, marriage, all of that. So you see these rebound uh, relationships where somebody gets sober and they meet somebody. They want back what they had, right? Very oftentimes, they lost a significant other. They lost the house. They lost the family. They lost. They want it all back. So take that and throw it in. When we stop doing drugs, we're still addicts. We are, right, for the rest of our lives. We can be sober addicts, but we are still addicts for the rest of our lives. I'm not saying you got to introduce yourself as one, right, because you're a recovered addict. But that, that uh, I want it all and I want it now attitude is still there. Throw in the fact that the chemicals are now raging in the brain. People, do you see where this is going? It's very, very easy to convince yourself that not only are you in love, but um, let's see, you know, it's 8.20 in the morning. I see no reason why I shouldn't be married by 9. That's really what happens. You see it constantly. Um, and I don't want that to happen to anyone on the boat. I really don't. And there are relationships that are fostering right now with people on the boat. I've had emails from people that said, I met so-and-so on here, and um, that's awesome, right? The, the day's coming where we're going to have a marriage from people who met on the boat. I will bet you any amount of money in the world on that. Uh, however, let's make sure it's the real deal, Holyfield, before we uh, do something like that. Uh, not to be a downer, but uh, people, we really need to think about this. Um, this is not, this is a two-hour conversation, by the way. Uh, it's not one that I can uh, fit into a 14-minute video. So this is something we're going to revisit uh, more than once. I would like to really break down the individual chemicals uh, and do it in a, uh, a more clinical way. But I wanted to get this out because, uh, again... You know, this is something that uh, that threatens sobriety of so many people. Um, everybody on the boat, anyone on the boat who is quitting a chemical. Now, you're going to, again, sober doesn't necessarily mean chemical. It's far more, um, it's far more evident uh, with chemicals because, you know, the other, if you're addicted to eating, it may not be the same uh, effect. It's going to have an effect on your libido, but it isn't the same as if you're doing heroin or if you're doing methamphetamine. Gambling addicts, still going to have it because once you let something rule your mind, then the normal functions of the mind don't work the same way. That dictator takes over everything. So, <clears throat> uh, again, we're going to revisit this, people, but uh, please keep this in mind, right? There are so many people right now who are just getting to that window of, the brain is starting to uh, to level out in terms of not craving the uh, the substance the same way, and uh, uh, that's going to mean that a whole bunch of chemicals are going to start flooding into the brain. You really need to think about what that's going to mean in terms of um, sex, love, marriage, relationships, all of the above. So let's be on our toes, right? Let's make sure that um, Let's make sure that we work the uh, the steps and we get a really good base underneath our belt before we start making life decisions like that's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Right? Captain Tommy's a downer. Um, but sometimes we have to be people, right? This is this is uh, the reality. However, I'm pretty sure a captain is allowed to uh, 
to marry people. Eh? So there may be a day coming, you know, that we're, uh, where we're going to see a marriage. I promise you it's going to happen. There's just too many people that, uh, that are meeting and really caring about one another. And that's, let's just stay on our guard, okay? People, uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be doing a live show. Uh, it will not be on this channel. I am going to be uh, interviewed on uh, Wages World. It's going to be Sunday, and we're going to announce what time here later in the week. But I wanted to let everybody know so that uh, uh, you know we can start to uh, to think about it. And I will give you the times because I'd like as many people to show up as possible. This is uh, this is going to be an opportunity for me to not be in control of what I say, you know, where someone else is going to be asking me questions and I'm going to have to answer them, which you know is going to be different. And it's going to be the first time you see me live, so. Uh, I really appreciate everybody, um, and people, please, get on the boat. You're good. This, is, this is absolutely one of the most uh, unique phenomenon anywhere in all of social media, uh, to be sure. And it's simple, right? There's a blue thing. It's going to pop up here at some point. I'm not, every once in a while, I'm really good at it. Sometimes not so good, but it's going to pop up here. Hit that. You will subscribe. Um, then you're not going to miss videos and you're going to become part of this family. Over here are some of the videos I was uh, mentioning. You should uh, watch every one of them at a minimum four times. And uh, people, I will be back tonight, five o'clock right here. Uh, I really appreciate everybody. I am Captain Tommy Scoville. And uh, this here, this is the lifeboat. Thanks, everybody.